Hello, hello, Whiskey Ginger fans. Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time joining, like I always say, please subscribe. Please go like it. Give it a five-star review. Write all the nice things and spread it around on the internet and tell everyone how much you love it because that's how we continue this thing. Um, I'm on the road right now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this weekend, in this current moment, I'm in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, my hometown, doing Tally a Hall. Totally sold out, which is phenomenal. Much love to the hometown. Next week, I'm going to be at Comics Roadhouse at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, if you're around there, Hartford, Providence, any of those surrounding cities, please come down, even if you're in Boston, because I probably won't come to Boston until the end of the fall. Um, and then I go to Portland, Seattle, Sacramento as well, by the way. Sacramento on the, I think it's the 8th, then 9 and 10, Portland, Seattle. Um, and then I go to, I don't know, I can't I can't remember, I'm, then my brain isn't working, but go to andrewsantino.com for all the dates. Um, sorry, then I go, to Flo- I go to Miami, Miami, baby, 420, I'm with Rogan. And then I'm back in Spokane, Spokane Comedy Club in Washington again. And all the rest of the dates in May, June, July, August, September, all that stuff are going to be up at andrewsantino.com as well as our Patreon for the one-on-one Q&As with fans, extra special bonus stuff, and great, amazing merch, incredible merch uh, at andrewsantino.com for dates and all things comedy related. Uh, Enough of my jibber-jabbing on. I enjoy the episode. Whiskey Ginger is supported by Squarespace, Squarespace can turn your cool idea into a brand new website to showcase your work or your content, or if you're an artist yourself that also wants to sell some stuff on there, uh, Squarespace can help you do that. They have beautiful templates created by world-class designers, uh, powerful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell everything and anything that you want to online. I've used it. I've used some of the templates that they have. I'm not someone who's good at that kind of stuff, at creating my own, so it's wonderful to use what Squarespace has set up for you. Um, they have a, it's a new way to, to get domains to choose over from 200 different extensions. They have analytics to help you uh, grow in real time to show you who your demographics are. Um, it's, it's one of those things that I think everyone that's trying to build a new website needs to use because it's a lot more difficult than you think. And this makes it so simple. Uh, you can make it yourself to easily create a website by yourself, make it stand out, make something colorful and wonderful and different and unique. And they have all of the templates there for you to start that process, create your own, use from what they have. You can uh, beg, borrow, and steal with Squarespace. Um, do yourself a favor and head to squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can lose, use that offer code whiskey and get yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, go to squarespace.com, create a new, beautiful, incredible website for everyone to see your showcase work. Use the promo code whiskey to get yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Mr. Zach a Fox. What's up? What's up? Chilling. Dude, I had to warm up my vocal cords a little bit because I've... What's I've been, your warm up? Uh, I sit in the corner and I just go, just ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and I have to do it over and over to get my tongue twisters on point. Yeah. Show the camera those shoes, those kicks. Yeah. Those Japan. are Japan. This was fresh. right when coronavirus like dropped. Really? I say it like it's a mixtape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Coronavirus right? came out. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Burr, 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 burr. So for people that don't know, let's inform the public. Uh, people that do know, they're very excited. A lot of people said that they were excited to have you on. We did a leak on this little thing, and they said, oh, my God, that's great. You're a comic, a writer, a musician, a performer. What else? You tell me. You tell me how it goes. What's the breakdown I, for you mm. if you could do your list of like... It's weird because it's, like it's like a wheel, but... I. I mean, I started visual art. Mm-hmm. That's what I just, that's all I wanted to do. Like, Did you go to school for it? Yeah, I went to school, dropped out. Hell I hated yeah. it. Drop out. Uh, drop out. Everyone Everyone, drop out. Please. If you're in school, for drop art, out. Get the fuck get out. Get out. Go do it. What are you it. doing? Yeah, just but do it. Did you learn anything practical to take away from it, though? I did. I learned so, a lot so of stuff. So it's good to, to, to get some knowledge and then leave. I would say go, rack up some debt, leave mm-hmm. halfway through. <laughs> Dude, bury yourself for a year or two. Yeah. Get the feel f- that and get then out. get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause it's like, oh, okay, I know what it feels like to be an American. Yeah. Buried in debt. Buried in debt. Yeah. And then I also know what it feels like to be an American with, with like having a half baked skill. Perfect. So I was like, oh, this is all I need. Isn't that what everybody does? Yeah. The only people that have like uh, exponential amounts of focus, I feel like when I've traveled the world, people like that, like the Japanese, 
They spend countless amount of years dedicating something to a craft. One skill. One thing. One thing. I don't think we can do that in America. Mm-mm. That's a, Back to what we're saying. You've got... We met working on a show for Adult Swim. Yeah. I knew who you were. I thought you were dope. I, li- I, I liked your stuff. I actually first heard you... I first heard you music. I heard music mm-hmm. first is what I heard. Probably two years ago. Yeah. Might be right. And I was like, oh, this guy's great. And then we did a writer's room together for Derek Beckles' new it show. Was, it was dope. And it was so much fun. It was man. fun. Just sitting yeah. in there and just coming up with nonsense, especially because those adult swim shows let you do. Do you, you know what just, bits that got shot and what didn't get shot? Yeah, a lot of stuff that we... A lot of stuff we came up with? A lot did of the, stuff. Did the, um, the Bible, the John... Uh, you remember You remember it was that, and then there was another Christian theme one that was the G.O.D., like yeah, yeah, security yeah, yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. got shot. And you remember we were watching that <laughs> RoboCop scene yeah. where the dude just gets yeah. shot <laughs> into like... If you don't remember the RoboCop scene where the robot comes to life and it just yeah. and litters up a dude in a, a conference room. He just, just turns him into spaghetti sauce. Yeah, we... He, <laughs> he did that. Did he? Yeah. What was the one we said? There was... It was... Um, there was so What many. was the... The robot was called John 3... Uh, it was like Geo, God of Domain. God of Domain. Guardian yeah. of Domain. Guardian of Domain. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And then the spaghetti, the sauce bit. Oh, that's right. They do the... the um, Gacy's, Jane Wayne, John, John Wayne Gacy's, Gacy's pizza or pasta, pasta sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we made, we had some great stuff together. Okay, so go back. before. So before we met, uh-huh. you first got into visual art and then, then you got into hip hop? I got into visual art for the sake of like my friends who were rapping and stuff. There's right. this, you know, a little label collective in Atlanta called Awful Records. Which is where you're from, born and raised That's, in Atlanta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Born well, born raised in Savannah, moved to Atlanta when I was like ten and then just started like coming up there. And then it was just like I just wanted to like art direct. I was right. like an art kid. I just wanted to like help people make videos, help people like design their covers and stuff. So it really it was like I just wanted to be like bossy. I just right. wanted to have like <laughs> control over top, people's top shit. Bitch. Yeah. Yeah. And then everybody was like, man, do your own shit. And I was right. like, yeah, you kind of, you're right. Is it because it's hard to find work? Like it's hard to do other people's stuff because people are so picky about their own stuff. Well, Atlanta is such a, it's such a, a small creative real estate that everybody's kind of fighting over a very small piece mm. of, of like, you know, resources or attention or like space, gallery space, whatever it may be. So I was kind of like, well, if I have a bigger wingspan than everybody else, then right. I could probably like get more work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, how did you, so how did you parlay that into like, did, was rap actually a thing you wanted to do or no? No, 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 nah, it's still not. It's you like, don't want to do it still. It's like it, rapping is fun and it's cool to like come up with the fun ideas, but what's more fun about it is like the other stuff, which is like, Oh, now that I have this song, I can create this little ecosystem around it where right. like I can make a video. That's really cool. I can like, show off like writer friends like man i want to get santino to come help me write a video or right, jack knight right. or whoever like that's what's fun about it is that it's like you're creating this little mini like world that yet you control like and nobody else can tell you what to. i could come I up with a that. song tomorrow and it's just me farting for two minutes straight <laughs> but nobody can stop me from putting it on spotify yeah, yeah, yeah. as long as there's no samples that i have to clear and i wouldn't sample well you make your because do you make all your own music uh i work with producers What's an what's a guy that you just that you worked with on um the bean drop? Uh that was Nadar. He yeah, yeah, yeah. came up doing Lil Peep's music, R. I. P. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Sad. Yeah, yeah. He Don't did bring Peeps. it down like that, bro. Oh, my bad. You mentioned death and stuff in the I first know. ten minutes I know. of the podcast. <laughs> so he did he did he did the bean kicked in, which is if you have if you need to get we'll put a bunch of links in the description below about all like all of your stuff. But I think that video is so good. And so is um I mean, I got depression is good, but Jesus is the one is the name of the song. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the, just came from like me freestyling. With, the whole thing is a free, you did nothing. None of it's planned. Uh, it it's was written. like we. Well, it was for Kenny Beats, yeah. his show on YouTube. The who's a, who's a, a producer? Super talented yeah, yeah, producer. producer. He's like a super producer, and he invited me on to do the cave. But like, you know, I like at that point I had like one song out and like was playing around with some stuff. And, you know, we're just fucking around like for YouTube. And, right. And, you know, I wrote like a little bit of stuff, but then freestyled some and kids loved it. So it was like we kind of got pressure. We were, we were like, damn, like people love this so much. Like they're like, you got to put out something. TikTok was eating it up. And I was like, all right, well, Kenny came around. He was like, let's let's just put it out. And it went fucking insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Do you streaming. know how do you know how you know how many downloads it has on streaming? I just know on Spotify it has like upwards of 20 million plays. And I was like, <laughs> 
cool. Yo, 20 million is crazy, right? It, it doesn't Did make... You, you didn't anticipate it? No. No, you just thought it was going to be out there for fun for you and your friends. I thought it would just be like, ah, you're stupid. But I feel like that's kind of how... You you have like a little click like that of, of guys that kind of put out stuff, maybe quote unquote... F- more for them or the artists or the community mm-hmm. and then it just goes viral like Thundercat is a friend of yours you were you tour with Thundercat yeah and people that don't know Thundercat man don't don't, don't sleep, sleep anymore yeah. so phenomenal like yeah. just visually and and I mean the music is what I heard first mm-hmm. and then I saw who like who he is and the product he puts out mm-hmm. and it's that's the kind of stuff where like when I feel out of touch as a guy who's almost 40 uh-huh. when I feel out of touch with like the youth and the gen and I, and I, and I see him and I go no, no. See, this I get. I get it. Like yeah. this, I go. Yes, 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 yes. Bro, I'm here. He this, is, I'm connected. This yeah. to this. But when I hear some other stuff, I'm like, <clears throat> I'm in space. I don't get it. He is the most talented person. He's unbelievable. It now, does make he make? Sense. Does he do? Does he? He makes his own beats and plays all the instruments and does all that stuff. I've seen his workflow a little bit, where he'll kind of like sit at home, write melodies. Like his setup is really simple. Like, all at home, all it, at his house. Like it, most of it's at its house, at his house. Just like he has his TV, he's watching anime and shit, Pikachu dolls everywhere, and then he has a workflow where he just like writes melodies, sings melodies, and then right. plays bass right there on his couch. God, that's and wild. then takes that over. And him and Lotus work really closely, Flying Lotus. Right. So he'll just go over there, and then they'll kind of like just build it together. Build it together, yeah. That's kind of like how I feel like um, a, a similar click might be. Whether or not that this is even has any connection to, to Thundercat at all, but would be like, like, uh, um, you know, like kind of like the old underground head circuit of producers who would pass music along on these mm-hmm. like very like private boards, and then somehow they would get leaked out. You know, you'd hear all these producers get leaked out, and they would just be making it for each other, mm-hmm. and then it would turn into something huge. Yeah, I was always impressed by that. That it was like, oh, how did this become? They kind of created this subculture. It's almost like how. Like people joke about black Twitter and they don't, mm-hmm. most people don't know what it is. Uh-huh. And it's the same thing. It's like very underground music yeah. that could be for the public, but I don't know if people intended it to be for the public. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it the same kind of thing, but it just kind of gets out sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, uh, I feel like all of the stuff I've heard from Thundercat sounds so professional and so well done, but it also sounds like it's very much artist driven for artists. Do you yeah. know what I mean? For a community. It's not like it's, over... Well, it's not overproduced. It's not very yeah. corporate. It's not very shiny. It's not very like... Mm-hmm. It's not very like like heading for radio. You know, like yeah. you can always hear new stuff now. And I don't have that. I mean, like I feel like I have an ear for music, but I don't have like a... I know what I'm talking about all the time about composition. Yeah. But you can tell when something is like... It's just... It's got this like tingle to it that sounds like it's radio play it's ready. Like, yeah, yeah. And that then, sounds like sometimes they put stuff out and you're like, this is purely to sell... Yeah. On a commercial level. I like when shit has a little bit of like dirt dust on it. Yes. It's kind of ashy and you kind of got to like, you're like, okay, well, that's why I like this. This right. is why it's better. Because I can tell that you didn't put this out like knowing it would do something. Right. And that's probably why it does something. Yeah. Like who are you, like who would you say, and by the way, for people that haven't heard, Jesus is the one is, <laughs> dude, I, once I listen to it once, I listen to it a thousand times. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> And it, and because it's just so simple and it's just you know sa- admitting you have depression and saying it for real on a track. Whether and now I can never say that ever again. Yeah, like, no, I know. I can't mention. I can't say Dorito. I no. can't. Not even joke. Like no. can't. It's, if I say I'm sad, people will be like, "Who? Because you get, now it's burnt, right? You got I'm like, now you'll get made fun of. How, kind of how like uh, when Kid Cudi like went away to like emotional rehab and then. Who made fun of him when he came out? Who Everybody. was that? Yeah, but but who somebody <laughs> <laughs> But somebody publicly was like how come I can't remember who it was? Some rapper was like oh. uh, like calling him a bitch for going away to get try to get work, trying to get help and stuff. <laughs> but then people got mad, but it was like, isn't that what rap used to be? Is everyone kind of making fun of each other and like shitting on each other, even during vulnerabilities, right? Like yeah. he's not dead. No. You know, like we have this weird thing in our society where we're like, God God, re- God bless the dead, you know? Uh-huh. And for some reason the dead- I don't believe of, in it. No, nah, see, it's funny. I don't believe in that. And like uh, now it's- It's gotten like, me in trouble a couple of times. Of talking about dead people? Yeah, because I think with, when you're alive, yeah. you get these jokes. Right. And when you die, you get these jokes. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if you died it didn't five minutes stop. ago. It, right. it is funny. Right. Like, if someone can make it funny, 
It's funny. I would if I was dead and I died and I like I talk about it on a stage. I have a joke about dying naked is my biggest fear. Uh-huh. I don't need to go into it, but like it legit legitimately is my biggest fear. Really? I think about it on a constant basis. Yeah, really? I don't want to die nude. Yeah, I don't want to be found naked because of just how much it implicates. It's just so nasty and diminutive mm-hmm. of like your naked nasty body, and yeah. I'm pale and orange, and like it's funnier. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm sure they laugh for sure. I don't care how tragic it is, they're gonna laugh when they see my naked white ass. Yeah, for sure. And it, I think about my like them seeing my penis and all this stuff. It's like it gets in my head. Yeah. So I just don't want to die nude. That's Were you it. scared of like voiding your bowels or anything like that when you die? No, because I know that that's that's common. That just comes with it. Yeah, but yeah. I just want clothes on. Yeah, like I just out of respect and my will, I would say like if you if I'm dead somewhere, just put clothes on me before like everything shows up. I just want to die going fast. Yeah. Oh, like in a car or a plane. Doesn't or... matter the vehicle. Really? As long as there was speed involved, and yeah. I'm I just want to be vaporized. <laughs> like I don't want any. You don't want to. You don't want to die slow. You just want to like disappear. Just kind of like deatomize. Like just yeah. fall <laughs> apart. Yeah. Right. I guess that. I mean, I, I guess the way to do that would be, like the... Paul Walker. That is. That's what he did. That's how I want to go. But, but didn't they burn to death? Didn't they burn up in flames? See that I don't want. He exploded and then burned to death. Oh. And every add-on to me is like. It, it's like Tony Hawk skateboard tricks. I'm right. like, oh wait, he died, bonus, burned to death, bonus, and bonus. his dick flopped out. And <laughs> you want all that to keep compiling? And a kid saw it, right? <sighs> and Whoa. a kid Snapchatted it, and then right. that's that was kind of like there was people that got in trouble for Kobe's death. Apparently, they had photos of it. The cops? Oh, was the cops? Yeah, I think the co- like, oh, it was I thought cops it was like a, I thought it was trouble. people that were that that trespassed that went over there when it oh, crashed. Oh yeah, but no, you might be right. I don't I don't know who it was. I think yeah, and LAPD, don't you like, know that's gonna happen? Like, yeah. That's my point of dying naked is I'm always like, someone's, someone's going to see it. Yeah. Some The reason the joke, the impetus for the joke is a guy died in my hotel in Vegas while I was there. And it gave me like so much panic. Like in the hotel building. Yeah. Yeah. He died uh, like on like uh, on my floor. Oh, shit. Yeah. What? Yeah. On my floor. Like how In the middle of the away? night. Oh, I, not on the other side of the hotel. Okay. Overdose or he just was like I, they didn't tell me. Dancing. I talk about it on stage. They didn't. They didn't say anything. They didn't say what it was. You, I, your mind goes. You're like he was high. Uh, he was on something. Yeah. BDSM got choked out by a hooker. Like there's a million ways. Dying in a hotel. Don't you know be. a lot of people die in hotels in Vegas though? I thought I was like, how come this hasn't happened to me before? For sure, people have people. Every time you go to Vegas, I'm sure somebody dies in one of those hotels. True. Especially how fat and nasty and all the cigarettes and all these fat wheelchair, but you know the whoop, people, yeah. those rascals. They probably make the hotel like a little bit worse, so people actually do die in there. Yeah. Those hotels got to have a deal or something where they're like, <laughs> like the funeral home director is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, if you can get me, fools. you get me three bodies this month. <laughs> In the in the I'll room, he's like, he's like, okay, and you got Rick got six, seven, eight, nine bodies. Where yeah. you go, Rick? Yeah, they're divvying it up to each hotel. MGM Grand had How'd four you bodies. How'd do that? Uh, we're funneling cigarettes, cigarettes, cigarettes smoke well. like into the room, yeah, like, dude. <laughs> trying we're to make putting people little die pieces quicker. of glass in their drinks. We're trying to kill these people as fast as we can. It's random though. It's it's yeah. We don't. Yeah, we're not. We're not selecting we don't people. Pick. Yeah, we just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just them saving grace. Yeah. No, we're not like racist or sexist. No, or no, we no. just we're just picking we're anybody just pick, out. I there. close my eyes. We're and just I, hitting them. I, <laughs> we're hitting them at random. But uh, but anyway, I I uh, I want to I want to jump back. Okay, so go backwards. So you you got into yeah hip hop through visual art. So that was yeah that was like how I started kind of like getting into entertainment. But at the same time, like 2013, 2014 is when I first got on Twitter. Um, as booty math, booty math, which was like the first like thing, and, and that popped and off. It kind of popped off. I think uh, I'm not really sure why. I think just because it was it was so absurd and like I was it was just a different time on Twitter. I think yeah. too. It was like a it was a more absurd like weirder time. But that kind of popped off, and then people were like, "Dude, you're 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 funny, and you kind of do this art thing." So I kind of started like nurturing the idea of like funny like like what that means like what that would mean to me like right writing writing more shit and writing jokes and stuff and then like eventually getting into stand-up and when did you like start that. performing i would say like late it's been it, it was like late 2016 so a couple only four years four years ago that's about. It. Yeah, yeah that's it and now you're touring yeah i well i do like little shit like i'll hop around like go do like three Texas dates, go do a college show. Like. So you just did a college. Yeah. You know, and just it's so funny as I read a review about it. Oh yeah? Yeah, just for fun. Yeah? Because At which college, one? I don't I don't maybe Santa Barbara or, uh-huh. or something like that. Uh-huh. But it's so funny because it's like 
I don't think anybody. Re- I don't have. I haven't had reviews in a long time unless I go to like a festival or something. I don't. Where do you find reviews for? It popped up on my I, feed. I go do it and I leave. Yeah. I, and I'm well, like, I don't want to know. I don't really want to know for me. Yeah. But it was fun to read a few because it was like it's always a kid that's writing it that's like. And then he joked about sex, and it got dirtier from there. I mean, it's not like it's not like it's <laughs> that's yeah. The one thing I don't like is if they talk about your jokes uh-huh. and they kind of like they didn't. He didn't. Yeah, yeah. But I had to like yell without at a dude. context. Yeah, dude. I had to yell at a dude. I called someone when I was in Toronto, maybe or damn, I don't know. It was a JFL. I think it was Toronto. I'm almost positive. And the the reviewer like. Put some of my jokes like, like verbatim. Yeah, dude. In the article, I'm like, don't do that, bro. Yeah. Absolutely not. You dummy. You can't do that. Where was this? It was I think it was in Toronto. Uh-huh. But I was at, J- at, at JFL. Oh, at JFL, JFL. I was like, you can say you hate my shit or you like my shit. You uh-huh. can't write the shit in there. Right. You can go, he talked about, you know, whatever. But he talked about dying naked and mm. I hated it. Fine. Yeah. But you can't be like, here's the joke. Like That's part of stand-up that is so, like, there, there's no other art form right now where, like, it, it, it's an active thing to be a stand-up fan. Like, yeah. you have to learn an etiquette. Yeah, you gotta go. Yes, you do. There's a, there's a thing. There's you don't like have a, to learn an etiquette to be a fa- like a music fan. No, you just or show up. You just show up and then you get the fuck out. And there's no high. rules. And yeah, you're allowed no to do whatever rules. you want. Yeah. But like, especially for me to have this sort of like nebulous whatever thing that I'm doing and to have stand up be involved in that and have and like most of what I do re- revolves around the idea of n- like not having to have any etiquette. Right. And it's just DIY and you can come enjoy it and then leave. But then there's this part where it's like, no, bro, you, you got to understand that this is a specific it's a show thing. Yeah. And don't tape. Don't. Cause do people film at your shows? Do you see it? No, no. And I mean, there's always somebody to be like, yo, don't do that. I'll see like boomerangs and shit pop up on Instagram. I don't care about like, no, posting just a filming it. You but don't like want filming it. it is like no, no it's so dude. annoying. Yeah, it's just like sit and enjoy the show, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't that that whole thing is like. See, I wonder because I don't play colleges anymore. In mm-hmm. fact, I talked about it on on this. Other what podcast. made you? What made you? I don't want to play them, dude. I I don't. I, it's weird. Well, I'm also, I'm, I'm 36. Yeah. I don't. I'm for. I'm too far away from a 22 year old now. Yeah. Not that I can't relate to them, and not like they might not like my comedy, Mm -hmm. but people that are in college right now in that world, I don't have much in common with in a public space of conversation. Like, I don't know what of my jokes they've even lived. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't think I relate to them and vice versa. I mean, this, and also, not to to sound like Jerry Seinfeld, or so it's like, they don't get it. (laughs) It's like, no, the problem is, University of Montana booked me for this thing. I got voted by some of the students as like the one they wanted. Mm -hmm. And then they just canceled my shit. Someone on the student board or whatever saw something and was like, he's offensive and he's vulgar and he's racist and sexist and all that stuff. like, what? And I was like, that's true, but also. (laughs) (laughs) Hold on, hold on, hold on now. (laughs) Fact, but you can't cancel me. No, but but they canceled the date saying that some of my, my material was to whatever whatever yeah but i was like dude i'm not i'm nothing compared to some of the people i know yeah so it just is one of those things where that's how i be feeling because i'm like like when people will be like yeah man his his jokes were too dirty or offensive blah blah blah. you heard of this guy jack knight and i'm like yeah way yeah if you think yeah 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 yeah. if you think for a second right i'm dirty or gross or whatever he's gonna come just yeah he's filth crash into the show jack knight is a filth bucket jack you know who you know jack came on the show (laughs) Jack came on the show and half of his stuff was about um, was about bitches. Eating, I think some of the, mo- the, the yeah. most comments we had were about like this Bitch. dude loves talking about bitches. <laughs> so it's like all it was, but it was fun too because get, getting his perspective was really fun. Because again, like Jack is like young single dude, and so it's like he's free as he a ain't bird. single. He got a girl now. Oh, he does he's, now. He's locked up. Okay, yeah. though back then he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, he was floating free. Yeah, but That's anyway, not good. I, I, so the schools for me are like, I just don't. There for me, it's not something I feel like I can connect with anymore. Because now I see my fans, you know, when I go tour, and I feel like most of these people are in their late twenties mm-hmm. or third, uh, late twenties and on up, thirties mm. and forties. You know, rarely do I have anybody in their fifties, but like I think it's probably like twenty seven to forty five, forty six or something like that. Mm-hmm. Is maybe my demo, but I just feel like the younger generation for me is like I don't know what. 
I'm not going to pretend like I'm going for them anyway. You know? Yeah. Like I'm not going to make a TikTok joke just because. If I write a TikTok joke, it's because I have a joke about it. Right. But I feel like that there that the college crowd might not like some of my perspective because it's about what's happening in my life at this juncture. Right. I mean, this may not connect. Yeah. Right. Like you get to go up there, and I and I from what I know of you c- comedically, you kind of you kind of just like you're kind of like such a um, you know, like a train of thought comedian where like mm-hmm. your brain goes in these different nuggets. I and, just go and. Yeah, different little avenues. You do that live too, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you do an hour? Uh, no, not usually. I, like UC and in Oberlin, I probably did like forty-five. Yeah. Like I would say, I have a solid forty. I don't want to do an hour. But do you I have mean, a set where it's like? Yeah, it, yeah. It's a very I, obvious set that you're doing at every show. Every show, or are you changing it every time? The way I write, I mean, I I will write out a joke, distill that down to like one word that is like like. If I look at it you in my brain, it. I can yeah. click that and then remember it. And then I write that into a list and then kind of like sure. move it around depending on what's going on. I might like put some shit in the front that's like, oh, this is super relative. But it's not that. a narrative throughout. It's just kind of you having fun and bouncing. No, it's almost like one liners. Yeah. But yeah. In joke yes, format. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like it's it's just as ADD as I am. And and like yeah, yeah, <laughs> sometimes yeah. I'll get into pockets where it's more personal. And, and that's those are the moments that feel more like narrative to me right. when I'm talking about like if it's a joke about my mom or something like right. that. But then I'm trying to come back out of that and keep like. Ideally, I would disorient even more and keep going down that it's path. It's hard to do. Yeah, it's, yeah, I Especially like that. Especially for an hour. An hour is tough. I like yeah. to change up as much as I can, but that's... I mean, one of my favorite comedians is Dion Cole. Ugh. And like, I watch him and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, he's, fun- he's, he's dope. <laughs> Just a kid from the shy. Yeah. Isn't that his, that's his hashtag all yeah, the time? Yeah, Dion's the only dude I know that can <clears throat> promote his tour and then also sell female hair products. Oh my God, I forgot you he ever, was ever doing seen that? that. He's yes. got like the... <laughs> The the what was it? It's for like it's to like scratch and itch for your weave. It's like a weave pick or something like that. It's like it's like a little. It, it was it, so genius. Too. It was, and he probably sold billions of them. Knowing him, it was like He's it was great. It, it was just than... like a little straight. It was like an. It was like it, it was to it was to itch underneath your weave, and it was just like this long thin metal, but it had his design on the end and pretty personalized. Yeah. But dude, he used to sell it. I wish I could find it. He used to sell it maybe on his Instagram or I used to see it all the time. And I was like, funniest thing, but he's here. Look, let me see. I got it. Now I now I like have to find it, (laughs) but he, dude, he, he, he must've sold an unbelievable amount of these things. Cause he would repost them and be like, (laughs) he'd be like restocked. I'm like, how many fuck? And those things probably cost 16. Oh, here we go. Here it is right here. Easy scratch hair tool. That's what it is right there. That's his. Yes. <laughs> and you just hold it and Yeah, man. I use that's I mean, it's just like a nice it's it, I'm sure it works wonders. Wow. Dion's the best though. He's yeah, he's, he's one, one of those idols. dudes. Yeah. So well, like who who let's go down these two categories because I want to know. Who was your influence as a kid or early on for hip hop? And then who was it for comedy? Like what are the what are the things that you go? I know why I like hip hop because of these people, and I know I like comedy because of these people. Hip hop, it'd probably be like Ghostface and like Southern rappers, like like Lil John and mm-hmm. like you know. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of folks. Lil B was a huge one yeah. when I was in college because I was like, you you can do this, like you can just. He just debased the entire thing, like completely mm-hmm. destroyed what rap music <laughs> meant, but like right. reconstructed in this way where like everything, in my opinion, is so post Lil B, where like when Migos came out and we're using like the triplet flow and we're like making, well, not the triplet flow necessarily, but like when they were just naming songs a person's name right. and then just saying their name over and over again, right. that is Lil B's influence. And, and that's like, them just kind of biting it hard. Huh? I mean, Lil B had songs that was like L and DeGeneres, L and DeGeneres, and then Migos came out, Hannah Montana, Hannah Montana, yeah. and then that just kept kind of going. But that, and then like, I guess comedy, I mean, my favorite comedian ever is Patrice O'Neal. Ugh. Um, rest in peace, man. Yeah, rest he in was, peace. I wish he was around. People always say that all the time. People are like, oh, every comic says that. I really do. I would love to see what his perspective would be right now. He was the most freeing, anti the system thing. He was yeah. the he was the he. Careless is an incorrect word, but he was just like he wasn't careful. He just yeah. was never careful. Yeah. And I just would I would wonder what his 
how he would feel about everything now. Yeah, because, you know? I mean, he would still be... Nothing would change. Nothing would change. He'd probably change. go harder now. I, I assume he would be very famous. He Because for people that don't know Patrice... Famous Patrice, with who? I, I mean, he would be famous. He would be more famous I wonder famous that, like, now. what group... Cause, you I know, think Netflix would give... He'd, be, he'd have a massive special on Netflix, and he would kind of be the pioneer of Do you think that. he would have made it through, like, 100%. 2017? and 100%. All, like, yeah. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. Let's be real about it. Here's why. Patrice always put things in perspective and shut people down before before all this bullshit happened, like before we have got into this thing that we're into, whatever it is, I don't even know what to call it. Mm -hmm. But Patrice also knew how to... Patrice knew how to play with race in a way that was like very eye-opening. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? He'd be like, yeah, you would say that because you're a white man, Colin Quinn, but mm -hmm. he would do it in a way that wasn't like... Mm. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was no. just it was it was always him shitting on somebody. It was never a liberal way. No, or, it was it was actually the it opposite. It was not a woke thing. That no, he was it was doing. almost quite conservative. It was like yeah. a conservative way of him telling yeah. a liberal about something else, which I always was fascinated by. Yeah. And so I think like to I think someone like Patrice would know that whatever's happening right now as far as canceling culture and people and uh he would go right for the gut. Like I'm sure he would He would just blaze through. Yeah, it. I I don't think he would care. I don't think it would even touch him. It's almost like he in the, in the way that Chappelle kind of has, you know, he's he's flawless. It's yeah. almost like no matter what they do, they can't really hit him. You yeah. know, yeah. Like when people got mad about his LGBTQ comments on his the special, special, it didn't even matter. Like it didn't mm -mm. even touch him. I think that's the the biggest point of all of it is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, none of, like literally none of it matters. Like unless you did something or you do something, right? The shit that you say, yeah, it's word. It's all bullshit words. It's is it's bullshit. Yeah. And I remember like seeing Chappelle. He came to uh, Jack's show at uh, the comedy store in the Belly Room and kind of like touched on some of that shit before the special came out. And he he was kind of like, if they're gonna cancel me, do it. I'm waiting. Try. Go. What are well, you gonna at his level? Into? What could you do? Yeah, he was. Yeah. I think he literally said. What do you? You're gonna knock me off of my throne into millions of dollars. <laughs> that's the worst that can. Yeah, happen I'll go to sleep to on piles of money that my fans are gonna keep giving to me. I mean, that's that's the thing. Like, why I think those guys are are a are, are so rare. They're not. I'm sorry. They're, they're they're so rare. They're not a dime a dozen. It's like that's why they come along only once in a while because they're able to just have like confidently walk into the fire and not care if it's gonna if it's going to burn them like mm -hmm. they don't care at all and most of us i'm not gonna lie most of us care it's hard most people care yeah you yeah we yeah yeah, yeah. like look when we were in that writer's room together it's like it's we can say whatever we want and then sometimes you check yourself a little like, bit mm, should i say that i should i should chill <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's just, or the thing like, i just said i'm like oh yeah we've done yeah. we all do it it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's hard to not do that because you're supposed to be somewhat conscious yeah as a comedian you're like i don't really want to say thing something that doesn't represent me anyway mm -hmm. even if it's an easy joke that i really want to make yeah but it's a it's a line right it's just like a tough it's a tough it's a tough line patrice knew how to like barrel through that i didn't know I think, him as a person i wish i did i think a lot of it comes from like w what are you because we're not afraid of saying anything because of like people getting upset we're all afraid of something because we want money and we, we want, want to, work we want our work and we want like to maintain that yeah and i think patrice was someone who was like he would take he would take general meetings and like tell networks what they're doing wrong and like know, it's wild. just shit on them and then be like, all right, y'all. Wait, you're not going to tell us about your. Nah. No. Nah. Bye. <laughs> it, <laughs> that's like. I wish I had the balls. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I just don't have the balls. I also don't have the patience to deal with the other side of that. Yeah. Like I don't want, I don't want like people that have the like kudos. I just, I'd rather like do my thing as hard as I can mm -hmm. and, and play a little bit nice with some of these people, but not, not to compromise myself. Yeah. But like, I don't know. It's almost also for me, sometimes you're fighting the wrong fight. It's like, why are you climbing this hill when you don't need to? Don't go up. Here. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. why? I don't know. Like yeah. there's other things I'm more concerned about and that's got to be last on my list. And the downside of it too is, uh, it's like that one, that one Bill Burr joke where he kind of talks, he's kind of touching on domestic violence mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, sometimes you'll get that crowd that's laughing a little bit too hard yeah. at yeah. the domestic violence joke. Right. that I am making and it's like you I don't want you to agree with the joke mm -hmm. you're supposed to laugh at it don't think that it's a mindset yeah but you can't pick and choose sometimes but you can't pick and choose yeah. and like a guy like Chappelle he yeah. comes out Chappelle comes out of his house in Ohio 
to film a special. He has a gun and he just shoots it. And then he doesn't give a fuck who's right. on the, uh, you know, who's on the other side of like how we're receiving it. What mirror is on the other side? Cause he's going back home. It doesn't but matter. He put, he, he spews his message, does his shit. And then like somebody like Rush Limbaugh or like Alex Jones could be like, he's a champion of free speech. Da, 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 yeah. da. You, you can't really you can't help that yeah well that's how it's like uh some i don't know who said it they said you don't want all the fans you want the right ones yeah i don't know who said that but somebody some comic said that to me and i was like oh that's so true you don't want all the fans Mm -mm. you just want the right ones you want ones that like you were happy to have in terms of like you know i can make a good racially charged joke Mm -hmm. i don't want someone from the kkk to be like that's my boy that's my san that's my santino i got i got somebody hit me the other day they said trump is trump a trump um organization like a trump sponsor is they're putting together like a comedy tour and they're like asking comics who they think um would be comfortable or like are not pc and they're cool with it Mm -hmm. would do it and And it's to and it's to like Donate to his campaign or like it's, or, to, it's to like I guess like promote his campaign promote to like go Trump. on tour. So anyway, do we, it. we start May seventeenth. Yeah, I'll no. do it. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> but I, they didn't ask me. But I, they were like looking. I just the rumor was they were looking into stand up comics and like had someone at the like that's gonna go to the comedy store to like see people. I I don't know what the details were, but Weird. like yeah, they want to see if they can do like a comics. I mean Trump's com. I don't know whatever it is. I mean he gonna win, so it's I'm like, doing it. You might as well just. They said they're offering uh, money, they're offering a room in the White House. You can go kick it with him. <laughs> he is going to win, right? We talked yeah, about that. Yeah, he's one hundred percent going. Yeah, there's literally no doubt. He's I mean, going to. The Democrats destroy. are doing the exact same thing again, where they put Joe Biden. Pop, people are going to be like, "We're talking about politics." Yeah. People, they put Joe Biden in this position just to like, you know, get knock Bernie off because I think they want to do it again to him. Mm-hmm. And then Joe well, Biden is just going to, you know. Joe he's Biden's gonna, gonna. I think he's gonna hit somebody. He seems like he might hit. Some, I think that's he's gonna debate. hit a fan. He's yeah, gonna he's hit gonna like hit a, a fan, fan of his. Yeah. <laughs> he's like Joe. He's gonna turn around and you're just doing all swing. the right things. Like you gotta yeah. shut your mouth. <laughs> when I was around young black boys, they would touch my legs. Dude, he always has the weirdest. Ri- he wants to like say I like black people, but he, he can't say it. Yeah, it's like the weirdest when he does it. It sounds you're like, what? What are you? Is this a? Are you admitting something? Like you know, like yeah. are you trying to say something? Cause he's like, and the black people come out, the, and the native people know me and well. Like people and, who are voting for him, I'm like, you know, he doesn't like black people. No, he likes a black guy. Even that was then, his boss. Maybe, yeah, that, maybe that was just his boss. And I don't even think he really liked Obama nah, like that. No, like, no, I don't think so. I, the 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 logic is like, I think he, um, I think he enjoyed a position of power, as yeah. so many people do. Yeah, but I always say, why is there a vice president? I never understood that because vice presidents don't really have to, you, you can just get like, you get asked to be like, I want you to run with me. Right. Yeah, yeah. But if I win and then I die, you just get my spot. Mm-hmm. No, I think we have to vote again. Like, yeah. I think if they, they're dead, yeah. we vote again. Who is it? Um, Doug also, Stanhope if I become about, vice president, I'm trying to stay vice, vice president. president. Yeah. I don't want to be president. No. Yeah. That's a cakewalk. It's so nice. Yeah. You, you just get chilling. to, you just get to chill out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You just get to chill a little bit. You're like, I get all the benefits and none of the pressure. Yeah. Do you know what cakewalk means, by the way? Just like an easy. No, I mean, do you know where the you know the the, the etymology of it? Do you know? What oh, it's no, from? like where it comes from? No, yeah, no, this no. is wild. I I, so I I looked this up for some reason because I said cakewalk the other day, and I was like, what does that even mean? Because you're like, what is does it like that mean? Walking with a cake? No, yeah, that's. I was like, it's got to be something like that, like a bakery term or something like, like that. I because I imagine like the 1800s, you walking around with a cake, it might be a little bit like more diff. I don't know, Mm-mm. more like I don't know. But I looked it up. It said it was a term that a cakewalk was a post dinner dance. And um, it was actually a, like in, a slaves would joke uh-huh. about the cakewalk time. Uh-huh. And it was like when these plantation owners would dance uh, post di- post meal with like a dessert and they would do this like very corny Pro, pre-programmed dance mm-hmm. and so they would call this the cakewalk this like, like a square dance type yeah thing? exactly exactly like a cheesy huh. but so how did that transfer over to today because, because it, was it was very it was, easy? it was very simple Sim- yeah ah, it was something very simple that's a cakewalk and, but apparently it used to be like a joke like slaves would joke about cakewalking uh-huh. like if they're like oh they're cakewalking it's like uh-huh. mo- it was like mocking, mocking 
these poorly coordinated post dinner dances that were stiff and arranged and felt forced. That was one of the things I read. But you know, these etymology things are like nine other definitions. They could like, come from anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. There's, but I like that the one, one that like hush puppies came from. Have you heard this one? Uh-uh. That hush puppies were actually, you know, they would fry little pieces of cornmeal and they would give that as a treat to dogs when they were out sniffing for runaway slaves. Really? So the dogs wouldn't make any noise. noise. They called oh, it hush, hush puppy, like shut up so they don't hear Is that you. real? I wonder if that's real. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Because those hound dogs, when they're out, when they're hunting, they're loud. So yeah. that could be the they way that they subdued them. be like, mm. God, that's so wild how all that stuff comes from. I know. When and you start to that, learn where, where this, even whether it's real or not, uh, it, it's real. How about that? And also, hush puppies, delicious. Yeah, they're bomb. They're so yeah. What a good. bad association. It's so <laughs> bad. I'm like, th- thank you. Yeah, you like you know the history of these. You're like, I know, but. There's so much shit like that. Like, growing up in like the de- in deep Georgia, I mm-hmm. would hear so many weird sayings like that because savannah is, is off bro it's like what do you mean like like racist yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. it's so off because you know savannah was it was the gift it was sherman's gift of the south right when he burned everything else he saved savannah as like right. the the thing uh-huh. so none of it changed it's like the it's same stuck in a time machine it's, it's in a time yeah. capsule and like you'll hear shit like have you ever heard the saying if it's raining while the sun's out the devil must be beating his wife no but Go on. <laughs> you never heard this? I've never heard it. I get so surprised. when but I, we I, don't hear, Those Southern phrases don't really make their way out of the South. Yeah, that's why I'm so surprised. I've yeah. asked like three people in LA, have they never. heard this? And they've never heard it before. But I would hear people, oh, sun's out, it's raining, devil's beating his wife. What does that mean? Wait, the sun's out? If the sun is out when it's raining, the devil must be beating his wife. Where does that even, where, I how does that? I don't know. And I've tried, I've went on Reddit. Right. I've I've gone to the 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 depth the of the deep, of the internet. Yeah, when the when the sun is out, when it's raining, because I used to hear like when we were a kid, when it would when it would rain and you would see a cloud and you see sun poking through. Uh huh. That used to be like a God's what was it? God's lampshade or God's de- desk lamp or something. But see, that's that's it wasn't negative. It's right? visual, right? It's like yeah, I get it. It looks like a thing. It looks like. But a the lamp- devil must be beating his wife. I was I was like, why does he have a wife? I know. Why does he need? Why does he need to be? Uh, sun- well, if it's sunny while it's raining, he needs the light, right? He needs I, to see her when he hits her. But it, he probably hits cor- her when it's raining because you can't hear any the from outside. Correlation, though, it's like yeah. But when I hit, I hit when I hit my old when bag. Hit, when uh-huh. I hit her, when it's you, nice when it's raining. Okay. Because just at the th- there's a nice white noise, right? To yeah, yeah. to Our mask old, her crying yeah. after. My, that's the name of my next album. Is called White Noise. <laughs> That's the spe- that's got to be the special. Yeah, white noise. <laughs> I would love that. That's actually that's a great name. I might that's steal that. Really good. No, yeah. When you when I when I hit my old bag, yeah. When I hit her, it's good. When it's raining outside, so no one can. Right. Well, the Andy Dufresne break in the rock, and, right. and Shawshank, he just waits for the thunder to hit. I don't know what that is. There is all sorts of like my dad is from the south, uh-huh. and I've got some love in my heart for the south for sure. But there's parts of it that I love have more to do with the beauty of the south. Less so than the people. The, well, look, and there's a lot of good people down there. Yeah. I was just in Atlanta. I loved Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. I loved Atlanta. Yeah. You know why I like Atlanta though? Hmm. Because Atlanta still has a is still so multi multiracial living amongst one another. Where you go to a lot of cities like LA, where it's like LA, it's a it's, it's this it's big urban melting pot. You're like, no, it's not. No, it's not. White people are here, Mexican people are there, black people are there, yeah. Asian people are there. It's not. And I Atlanta, heard somebody the other day. They were like, "Man, this coronavirus shit. Why don't we just like get all the Asians and like put them in one spot?" I was like, "Oh, you mean like Koreatown? They're there. <laughs> they <laughs> they're there. They dude. did that already. Yeah, they're already locked up. This town is segregated. They're already. right there. It's, yeah, no, I think that Atlanta still feels very multiracial. Like I I still feel that way. Mm-hmm. I know there's neighborhoods that aren't, but it's still but it still feels very multiracial. Where like L.A. It's a joke. It's it's people that don't know you. St- even like New York, people are like New York, New York is you know this this Mm-mm. this melting pot is New York. It's like, dude, it's so segregated. That place is so segregated. Yeah, Atlanta still feels like it's got a lot of cross crossing of cultures and races amongst different neighborhoods. I might be ignorant because I haven't seen the whole city, but no. it feels like that to me. Growing up there, that's why it was so cool. Cause yeah, because most of all, it's a black city. Yeah, and that coming from coming from Savannah as a kid. And like seeing how that was, where everyone's like scared and on their toes, right. and like, like I see like a forty-year-old black man saying yes, sir, to a younger white man. I'm like, Ooh. as a kid, I'm even like, 
You just throw that's, up. That's weird. Yeah. That's, I don't think yeah. that's right. And then go into Atlanta and it's like Wakanda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, boom. Like, all right. I was like, oh, this is what we're doing? Yeah. Little John in the East Side. Like, I lo- Atlanta has that vibe. I said, I yeah. said it before. I love that. I did Buckhead Theater. I loved it so much. I, w- I would tape something there. I would film something there because the people were amazing. Yeah. They, they, and even when white people, white people can be at, like, if, if, say you're, you're white, you're racist, mm-hmm. you live right in the middle of metropolitan Atlanta and you're around black people every right. day, you're still a good hang. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to be, it's hard to be, it would be hard to be racist there. Uh, I would hard to be full racist there if you were racist. Cause it's, you're so inundated by black with, with black yeah. culture. I'd rather hang out from a racist from Atlanta, a white racist from Atlanta than someone who is like a liberal, like I want to pretend like I like from here. black people from yeah. here. <laughs> Fuck you. That's I all hate, of America. I yeah. hate people out here who yeah. try to... That's that shit that happened. They're like, I, I was, love blacks. I just don't want them anywhere near me. Right, right. Like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> they're sweet. They're sweet to be... They're sweet to have, but I just don't <laughs> the like them. Joe like Biden it. treatment. Like, yeah. that is. So that is. Joe Biden is like this phony liberal idea of like, like, what do you mean? I like I Obama. I, love, I was with Obama. You were employed. You think I don't like black people? He <laughs> he says blacks. You yeah. Know, you think I don't yeah. like black the blacks? He Why says does the black blacks. sound so the blacks? Blacks sounds so because you know you you know they mean it when they say it. Yeah. The blacks. The blacks. It's like saying them. They. It's like a sitcom. Yeah. The blacks. The, like, on NBC. I'm not a person. It's, <laughs> it's just. <laughs> it's an item. Yeah. Like I walk in and everybody. Ladies like, and gentlemen, the blacks. <laughs> yeah, I think when people say the blacks. I think they mean it like the way that you think they mean. It. Do you know what I mean? But I also hate African American. I've said that before. I think it's such a diminutive, weird like you're Af- you're African first and, and then, then you're, you're American. American. Yeah, it's yeah. very weird. Yeah, you're black. You were black or white. Yeah, you're not. Unless, by the way, I would say you're African if you're from Africa and you move to America. You're African. But if you're black and you move to and you live in America, you're from here. Yeah. You're a no. black man in America. You're from Detroit. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're from here. Come on. <laughs> I never understood. I never liked it because I had a woman say that to me at a show. She said African American. Well, I told a joke about. Um, I told a joke about my support for the for people taking a knee for athletes taking a knee in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And it's you know basically the I don't want to give the joke. I don't want to say the joke. Sure, but sure, whatever. Sure. But whatever. It's basically me supporting saying like. Mm-hmm. What you're gonna go against uh, the most important part of the sport, by the way? Like you're gonna tell these guys no. What, what are you gonna do without them? You know what I mean? Like, what, good luck. Yeah. Uh, and ba- whatever. And then she comes up to me after, and she was like, "You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like the angle of your joke." And my husband is African American. It was a uh-huh. white woman, and she kept saying it over. Dude, she said it so many times. I wish I had my recorder. She was like, and being someone who's married to an African American and has a child with an African American, I was like, well, stop saying that, lady. Me, her husband, he's Dominican. Or yeah. Like <laughs> he's Puerto Rican. Yeah. She doesn't know. As someone who's in love with an, here, here's my, this, this is my husband, Pablo. He is. Yeah. 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 What? Wait, what? Pablo. Yeah. What if he tells her, he's like, no, I'm from El Salvador. Yeah. She's like, he's got beautiful straight hair. But you know, like, he's Afri- to us, to yeah. us. He's to a, me, yeah. to me. But it, it rubbed me the wrong way. She was trying to shit on me for my joke. Mm-hmm. But I was like, why? First of all, the joke. Yeah, because she was stupid. Really, unfortunately. Was she trying to say that her husband doesn't support like Cap and that type? She, shit? I think she was trying to say she didn't like the um, I think she didn't like, I guess, the joke itself, like the rest of the joke. Just she didn't really like like. Whatever it's 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 such a stupid joke, but I yeah. she, whatever it is, it rubbed her the wrong way. Mm-hmm. But it's the same way as I like. It's mostly stupid people that tell me they don't like a thing. Yeah, because if you're smart enough, you would just go home. You would go home, even if you didn't like the joke. You yeah. just wouldn't care enough. You'd go, ugh, I don't like that joke. Yeah, you know they be like uh, Zach told this joke. I'm just not a fan of. But keep it inside. Whatever, go away. But whatever. Yeah, yeah. Stupid people are the big are the first ones to tell you. What is that? My phone. Oh, leave. Oh, good. Is that a? You want to turn it off? No, you can. I'll, should I turn it off? No, fine. Leave it. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's my that's my uh, old bags alarm. My wife's. That's her alarm in the morning. Really? That, this this nice. Yeah, little, that nice little wake up. That's wow. What a life she must. No, live. but I like that because when people have. <laughs> nah, 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 oh, like, yeah. How do you wake up to that? That yeah. gives me panic in the morning. Mm-hmm. I would rather have a light toned, starlight wake up than yeah. to that. <sighs> I can't. I don't do know that. how you don't wake up without the loud like, oh really yeah well for me it, uh i'm on an internal clock i need to i, I, wake up I needed to feel day. like my house is being raided 
<laughs> like your, your your phone is like you're being robbed. Yeah. You're being robbed. I need to wake up and and feel like I want to have the emotion of someone who's about to flush a brick down the toilet. <laughs> like that's what how I have. Like that's the only way I'll get you up. You need panic. I need to panic to get up. I can't, see that that doesn't that ruin your morning. I need I need slow destroys it <laughs> you don't care you want it anyway i just gotta get up you need the anxiety to work otherwise i'll just what's the point you know when people say like you work as an artist you work better at night do you work better at night or during the day i don't think i work better at night i just for some reason i have more ideas at night god i'm the opposite really first thing in the morning i have an insane amount of mental I'm so energy jealous i do no because i'm jealous because of people that like i used to go home and write at night a lot and maybe it's just my age or my schedule. But now when I wake up, I wake up every day at like 730 every single day. Mm -hmm. No matter if I went to bed at, at 10 o'clock or at two in the morning, three in the morning, my body will wake Did up. Did that change as you got older? Yeah. I used to wake up later. Now I wake up earlier. Yeah. Also, when you live with another human being. You, you have, got kids? No, you no, kids, no, yeah. no. But I, I like for some reason, my body's just ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I'll either, if I go for a walk or a run or go to get coffee or whatever in the morning, my brain will flood. It's almost like di like mental diarrhea. Yeah. And I'll have to write in my phone for like an hour of just like blah, 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 plopping it out. And then sometimes 2, 30, 3, 4, 5 comes around and I'm going to a meeting or whatever. I'm dead. Uh, I you're, have, you're I have no, I've no, There's nothing left. Yeah, it's really? the weirdest thing. I don't, I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. Because the middle of the night for me is like stand up is performance. And then after I'm done, it's almost like my brain. It's like, you know, they're like they're cleaning it out. <laughs> You know what yeah, I mean? Like I caught yeah. the guy sweeping in the bar and, and he's like, you're here? And I was like, I just, I was going to have one. They're like, uh, nah, I don't, we're out. I don't out. think the bartender's here. I think they're gone. I think everyone's gone. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll just sit here yeah. and I'll sit for an hour staring and thinking about, uh, thinking about stuff and nothing fruitful comes for some reason. Really? Yeah. Like every musician friend I have, all of them make music at night. Uh-huh. And I know it's a stereotype. It's like, we're at the studio. The night out. Five. Yeah. But. But for some reason, everyone I know at work, it works brilliantly for. Every rapper I know is why up until they they work until like 7, 8 a.m. And then sleep. And then sleep the entire day. You should be the first rapper to rap in the middle of the day. Just like, like you were killing it noon to three. Right, at, at 11 a.m. Just <laughs> <laughs> with Earl Grey tea. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I walk my dog and then I rhyme till four. Right. Like, like an ascot. Right. <laughs> Real proper. <laughs> Would you ever put out a full album? I don't know yet. I, Cause you I, put out a bunch of singles. I put out a few singles, and I like that. I like that model because that's what Takashi Six Nine did, and yeah. he's like, he's your boy. As as dumb and like ridiculous of a story he has, like putting out a single and letting that be a thing for a second is kind of like, like I mean, we just don't live in a in an album era that's anymore. Exactly where is that is what a true statement. We don't live in an album era anymore. And I'm not. I'm not Steven. Like, I'm not the best bass player in the world. I'm not, like, an instrumentalist where, like, I'm about to take you on a journey through this whole, like, cosmic right. landscape. I'm going to make dick jokes, <laughs> and then I'm going to make more dick jokes, yeah. and then I'm going to make some pussy jokes. And then yeah. some. So it's like, for me, I, I don't have, like, a, a need to put out, like, a body of work, about unless right. it was conceptual. What about for stand-up? Same thing. You don't really care about putting out, like, a, or doing a cohesive special or anything? I think I... Can I be real for a second? Yeah, I think yeah. that they got to stop letting people do specials for a second. Unless, for a while. Unless you are like, how many how many years you've been doing your shit? For 15, almost 15, 15 years. Unless you're like 10 years and, and over with this shit or like, like everybody is like, no, that is a comedian's comedian. They they like rock their shit. Yeah. I don't want to hear what the fuck you have yeah, to no, say. Yeah, no, you're probably right. Listen, you know what's so funny is I, I'm toying with the idea of putting out special, uh, putting out singles. You like, have specials out, right? I have one. You have one. Yeah, yeah, I have one. I've only done one in 15 yeah. years. I mean, I did a half hour with Comedy Central. Right. Um, But that's... It's, I don't think... That's really 22 minutes of stuff that's out. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not really a special. That was really an album deal. That was back when like... We albums were kind of still great to have, and albums to me are sexier than specials. Or, I mean, they used to be uh -huh. because, like, I just love the idea of somebody. I like the idea of closing my eyes and yes, I'm like I'm there. Yo, my mom listens to my first album, and uh -huh. she she calls me all the time. And it was always weird to get to this place where my parents became like kind of fans of my work, which was weird because uh -huh. you're always so nervous. I'm like, they're not. Gonna, I'm talking about, you know, come, playing with my booty. It's come, like come, they're not. Yeah, they're not gonna. Yeah. They're not gonna like that. You know, but. For my mom to like some of the stuff that I talk about, and she says she listens in the car, for her to envision it, 
is probably why she likes it. Uh -huh. She gets to play it in her head any way she wants. Mm. So that was kind of the beauty of comedy albums. At least for me, when I was a kid, I used to love comedy albums because mm -hmm. I got to imagine, I got to draw the, 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 stage, the, the stage. I the got outfit. to draw everything yeah. and the bit they were talking about. Then that took me to a new place. Mm -hmm. And then I envisioned them again. Yeah. You know, I think that was maybe what was so special. There's but something I, about watching these specials come out and having, they, like, to have all of these streaming platforms, to have all of these different voices, the most variety of voices that we've had in comedy ever. Ever, ever, and by, a, by a lot. That, and the fact that every special, special is homogenous and it all looks the same, I'm like, whoa, how is this happening? Like, how does this... Yeah, it, did, it doesn't... Well, the problem is, you know, the problem is we're all fighting for airtime in a different way. We used to fight for airtime on Carson and on Late Night and all that stuff, and then now comics are fighting for Netflix airtime or HBO or Amazon airtime because there is so much content mm -hmm. that comics want to be like, we're different. Look, look, we're, we are stand-ups. Mm -hmm. We're not just on the YouTube thing or the, the thing that you've seen us. We do this other thing, and for me, I'm at a weird place where I, I don't, I think I would, I've talked about this before. I want to put out I'd like to put out singles. Like I think if I just put out like one joke a week or one joke a month or something like That's that crazy. from what used to be a special in my mind, yeah, it's sexier. I also toy with the idea and a bunch of people told me that was stupid. I told Theo Vaughn on his podcast, I wanted to tape an hour mm -hmm. and then put it out behind this weird paywall, like a, like a protected fire. And, and it's only available for 24 hours. That's amazing. You can watch it once and then never again. It's gone forever. Yeah. Yeah, I had the idea because I this guy, I talked about it again on Theo's thing. There's an artist named John Baldessari. Do you know who that is by any chance? Uh -uh. Baldessari was, he's great. Look him up. You might you might like it, you might hate his stuff. He's a he, comic? No, he's an artist. He was okay. an artist, an artist. And one year he burned all of his stuff. Uh -huh. He like lit his entire collection on fire. Yeah, and he was like, I just want to start from scratch. Paintings. Yes. Paintings, drawings, um, hand manipulations of, of physical art, like... Yeah, dude, it's crazy. He just lit it all on fire. Wow. <laughs> yeah, dude, he was just like, fuck it. That's so hot. Yeah, it was dope. I love And his carelessness it. about it. There was no nostalgia to it. Like, you can feel it when he talks about it. Mm -hmm. He couldn't have given a fuck less. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I burned it. And people would be like, why? He was like, I wanted to get rid of it. I wanted yeah. to start a new, a whole new me in a new thing. Yeah. And people couldn't wrap their heads around it. I thought that's something fun about it. That's you know, so respectable too. It is. It's cool. Like it's 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 cool because it's his anyway. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck are you to tell? You know, it's like yeah. that's why Banksy tried to shred that piece of art in that auction to be like, it's my shit anyway. And yeah. Overselling it. Yeah. Sadly, it didn't work, and then sure. it, it got it was worth six times as much. Mm -hmm. That's I think that that the unfortunate thing about him. I saw a Banksy in uh, what was I in? Some you know ski town. He went to like. Maybe it was um, uh, Park City, Utah, I think. Uh -huh. And they had it like, dude, behind like b bulletproof glass. And it was like steel protecting the wall because they don't want people to paint over it or whatever. Uh -huh. But like Banksy, he loves when people ruin his art and paint over it. That's the, That was the whole point That's of it. That's the point of yeah. yeah, so when they put it in this like steel cage, I was like... And oh, this it almost feels like he is now too institutionalized he is. to be rebellious. Yeah, they sell his shit at, at Sotheby's, bro. Yeah. Like, you're, you're... Like, Pier it, 1, like, yeah. Banksy. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you go to Crate and Barrel and buy a... I got bank, this Banksy a, a couch. Banksy pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, it's the girl with the balloon. It's, yeah. um, if that's the duvet. It's a, on that's a plate. Duvet. On yeah. a plate. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's become now. So it's like, as much as we as artists want to be, like, completely received in, in... Like, you want as many people to see your shit uh -huh. and like it, but it comes at that comparable level of, well, is it mine anymore or theirs? Yeah. I don't like, I don't know. At some point I'm the, like, the I don't internet know. internet makes that conversation so, like I think about that constantly. Yeah, like is your music yours anymore? About, in in a way, no. In in a way, like, like getting banned from like Twitter and shit like that, that's like the only way that I kind of feel like I have yeah. a, a grip like it's it's mine. Like I'm driving the car and right. I'll crash it if right. I want. Like I have friends. Like you know that this is like reducing your visibility and like you're monetizing and blah blah blah. Like uh, people are like so fucked and and like broken about like this gig economy shit that they're like you got to make a dollar. You got to make a dollar. And that's what goes back to what we were talking about. How like a musician will come out 
bro, you just started doing music and you want your shit to sound like Ty Dolla Signs. Right. Bro, be <laughs> ashy for a second. Go right. through the, but nobody wants to go through the process and be bad or be like shitty for a second. Everybody wants to make top dollar out of the gate and right. be clean. Like, here's my Twitch. Here's my Twitter. Here's my Instagram. I'm going to make money off of each of these things. Here's how because I'm we've been programmed. Like we've, been people, programmed. Like we've all been programmed to be like, you know, this is how it works. This is the good, this is the way to do it. Like, it's the same. I did this podcast because I really kind of wanted to do one. And I know everyone's like, everyone's got a podcast. But I was like, I'm only going to talk to people I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. And if I can't find anybody interesting, well, then I'm not, I, I might not do it. Yeah. So if, that's my goal is like, I'll just keep doing people that I think are dope and interesting and unique and different. And once that runs out, that runs out for me. It wasn't ever really for me to like cultivate catchphrases or anything like that, even yeah. though it sometimes becomes that mm-hmm. on accident. Yeah. But I think that's like, it's th- because it's be- a part of this entertainment system. It's, it's hard, man. You're what we all are walking this thin line of like, I want to make stuff and make a living, mm-hmm. but also still do it my way. Retain and, 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 a soul. And, right, right. <laughs> but that's why stand-up is, to me is, you'll never get me out of it. You mm-hmm. can kick me out of acting. You mm-hmm. can be like, you can't act anymore. And I'd be like, okay. Yeah. I like it, but okay. Mm-hmm. But you can't, if you, stand-up I couldn't get, if it got taken away from me, I'd be dead. Yeah. I'd be dead because it was it's the only way that I can go, I control every ounce of emotion and energy, negative or positive, on and off stage or surrounding my stand-up, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I had a show in Philly and I didn't really love the show. Mm-hmm. Fans liked the show. I didn't like it. It made me sit in my head and try to recreate what I did wrong and how to fix and it. And get better. That's important, yeah. right? Like that's the most... And without that, when you're just set up to be in the perfect sphere of winning... That's, that's what I mean. Is yeah, that like fucked. That's, you know, because people... It, 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 was, it was like that coming up on the internet where people can kind of like they'll they'll whittle it down to like this is an internet thing or this is that right in my opinion the only place that still exists where it's like are you funny can you can you put up can you hoop like yeah. can you put up yeah, yeah, yeah. points on the board with a crowd and the proof is in the pudding yeah. when you when you can make a crowd laugh it's undeniable for, for 10 minutes straight or 15 minutes straight or 20 minutes straight or however long that is undeniable That's and, fun. And, and like the ta- and and the the length and the dedication that you want to have to that is one of the only thing that's like like that's an instrument right that to me is as great as like Steven playing his bass or somebody playing piano and I don't have to be fucking Mozart but like if I can get on there and play fucking Mary had a little lamb <laughs> I'm a fucking play that shit and, like, and get better at yeah. that motherfucker you know i'm gonna marry had a little lamb the fuck out of that crowd I'm that night fuck that shit by the up. way for your next show will you play mary had a little i lamb? will 100 percent. i would for play real mary had a little that's lamb. like uh there's a guy that plays like um, a blue face version <laughs> <laughs> do you know who mark belay is that his name mark belay mark belay, mark belay. oh uh mark rebier yeah yeah Rebier. Yeah. that's yeah. what it is yeah. dude he's amazing anybody he's that's brilliant. listening go listen to mark rebier i said his name wrong because i didn't remember it mark yeah. rebier yeah but he's at he does these wild freestyle shows at cafes yeah i mean he does huge venues too yeah but he's just like fuck shit and the fuck the bitch yeah, and yeah. Click, what you did let He'll me lick that, that ass <laughs> I'll do it for like 10 minutes. Yeah. You can tell he's finding it just as much as you are, mm-hmm. which I think is wild to watch. I love that guy so much. Yeah, him that and dude's legit. him and Reggie Watts kind of share a They have a similar a style um, of yes. looping. And Reggie then, seems to be much more um uh I don't know how to say this. Reggie tends to do it less from a comedic standpoint and more mm-hmm. from like this kind of like beautiful music throwback. Yes. And then also has dips of comedy in there just for like the the keen listeners. Yeah. But Mark tends to be like He's just talking you about You know I'm ass. playing. I'm yeah. Talking about if booty. If you hole. think this is if you think this is dead serious, you're a fool. It's you're almost dumb. like yeah. you're either on this train or you, or you're left of the station. Yeah. That's why I I like his stuff. But you kind of encompass that realm too with your music has a similar like freedom. There's mm-hmm. no other word I can use. It's just this freedom of like you know that that the bean kicks bean kicks in is like a minute and a half. Yeah, my mom called me like, "What is a bean? <laughs> what the hell is what a bean?" What do you say when mom calls? She knows, but she just she she knows. Yeah, you know it's funny. She'll like hear me like say all this gross shit, and then like I posted a picture of my butt 
with a mm -hmm. I voted sticker on Instagram yeah, yeah, like yeah. a couple days, like a few weeks ago or a week ago. And she was like, boy, what you doing with your ass on Instagram? You know, what I'm, I'm like, doing, you know, yeah. you've seen me do way other shit. But to her, like she just thinks about like she still sees me as little Zach. Yeah. So she thinks about your mama's son. She thinks about pedophiles looking at my ass. Oh, uh, and I'm they like, probably I'm do, 30. By the way. Yeah, but still, they're probably up there. They're still out there. I guess so. There's like, like, well, there's there's just creepers. I'm like, mom, I'm like, I'm not a pedophile, but I'm the age where I could be one. <laughs> <laughs> I qualified. Don't to, tell her that. To yeah. do it. Mom, I could I'm be a pedophile. I'm not a kid no more. Yeah. <laughs> mom, I'm not a kid no more. <laughs> I could be a pedophile. I That's could be that. in the big leagues. <laughs> I could compete. She's like, you can't compete. You're like, I'm, I'm one of them too. You'll never be a pedophile. Yes, you will. You, you work as hard. Kids at home, you do, you do whatever you want. You work hard. You could become a pedophile one day. Uh, are you? So, what's the next tour? Do you have tour dates coming up? What's that? What's going on? Uh, Texas. I'm going to Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio whoop, in a couple whoop, weeks. Whoop. Uh, I'm thinking about not doing college shows no more. So I'm. They're, they're tough. They're, I like them. I like yeah. them. They're fun. Yeah. I was. At, I, I meant to tell you, I was at Oberlin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm walking in Oberlin, and they had a great time. It was fun. But, like, I'm chilling in, like, the green room area, and I see all this shuffling around going on when people were already seated, but I see all this shuffling around. And I go, and I asked them, I was like, what's going on? And this girl was like, oh, the, uh, the host, the guy who puts this, this together, is asking that all the white students get up and let the black students take the front rows and sit in the back. So I just saw everyone like switching around and I was like, oh man. Why? There's some like crazy. What about like, just let people sit when they come in, sit where you need to sit? That's And that's what I was like, it doesn't, I don't care who's sitting up, up front. Like, and, and they were like, well, we did it because it's Black History Month and it's a black performer. And I'm like, but yeah, but my jokes aren't going to hit them <laughs> faster yeah. because of where they're sitting. Sound doesn't that's work the thing about, like okay, that. Okay, so that's the thing about colleges. That idea that it's like, because it's Black History Month, this would be a cool thing. Like that to them, they're like, this is cool. The whites go to the back and black people go to the front. But that, And it's not. No, it's, it's backwards. It's it should just super, be everybody sits together everywhere. You just right. sit where you sit. And I'm like, I, I I I talked about it like first thing, jettison the set and just talked about that for like 10 minutes. Like y'all are going to create the first white Rosa Parks here yeah. if you don't chill out. <laughs> yeah. Like one day some like, some yeah. like Melissa is going to be like, no. Yeah. No, I'm going to I've sit. had enough. I want to see Zach Fox from right here. These blacks. <laughs> 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 it ends. Yeah, that's. I mean, look, I, 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 not all colleges are the same. They're not all like that. But I just have found that there is a wokeness where they're stumbling over their own feet. You know, it's like your, your, your shoes are too big, man. You like, you can't. Yeah. You, 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 you can't trip over these details when, when they're, they're not as important as other things. You're also, like, you're, you're creating like this, this thing that does not exist in the real world. Mm -mm. And it's bad for the white students because yeah. you're creating weak white people. And that's the last thing that we need right now. <laughs> we need strong, we need strong whites, educated whites to yeah. help us. Yeah. That's the whole point of like a like racial peace and like coalition. Right. Is like if there's white privilege, I need a strong white to help me dismantle that and like get where the fuck I'm going. Right. I can't have some weak ass Joe Biden ass <laughs> motherfucker like <laughs> Well, I love blacks, and I want to help you get where you're going. No, so I, I think well, I. Can how do help, you want to do it? I can help the blacks more than the blacks can help themselves. Right. Well, when when I get around a black person, what I do is I stay really quiet, yeah. and I tuck my hands under my ass until they go. I let numb. him or her speak. And if he wants to fuck my wife, listen. Fine. 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 She doesn't have an ass, <laughs> but he can go. <laughs> and it's That's like a woman on my plane on the plane told me. I said this on my show. A woman on my plane goes. I like Bill Cosby as a comedian because he told blacks to pull, pull themselves up by the bootstraps. And I was like, I got to get off the bus. <laughs> you jump off I the jump, plane. I just jump right out the window. I go, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, it's almost as if you don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, go check out Zach's. Zach is, uh, you're one of my favorites, man. Your, your brain is brilliant. The way you work in comedy. The room was great. Your musical talent is incredible. Oh, your stand-up, I, I want to see. Um, go to zachfox.com. Is that the website that people can go? And yeah, check it's out just all, a, it's just a, jazz. It's just a Google Doc. 
<laughs> yeah, Zach Fox, a spreadsheet. Zach, Zach Fox. Zachfox.com is just a spreadsheet. That's so good. With uh, and you guys can fill in what you, whatever you, wherever you want them yeah. to go. That's how I was like. I was like, fuck, yeah, fuck, fuck a it. website. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, we are Google Share Doc. Anybody can add it. Just anybody. <laughs> uh, go to Zachfox.com. You can check them out in Texas in April. Where? When is it? Yeah, in April. Come out, man. Texas, come out. Here's what we do to end the show. I want you to look at the camera. And you're going to say one word or one phrase to end the show when I'm off camera into the mic. I'm going to be off camera. You say one word or one phrase to end the show. One word or one phrase? Yeah, whatever. I can pick whatever? Whatever you want. It's raining while the sun's out. Devil must be beating his wife. All right. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey.